Hello everybody, welcome back to Yannis Cake Tips, thanks for joining me again. Today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite cake recipe. Actually I'm going to use it as a sponge recipe and I'm going to make another cake with that. So throughout the years I collect recipes, as you always do. Uh, sometimes it comes from your friends, sometimes from your colleagues, sometimes from your boss, and then uh, sometimes you collect of course from internet, TV, etc. And of course on top of it you develop your own recipes, because every recipe actually as a child of another recipe, another mother recipe, uh, which you choose to uh, use it because it's, you know that it's correct and you can just create some other variations with that, different flavors with that. So uh, that's what's happened to me. And uh, I end up sort of like many, many recipes, little papers and little uh, pages and gathered into the files, etc. And sometimes I have difficulties to find uh, what I'm looking for. So um, I'm also fortunate enough uh, to be uh, living in different countries and experiencing different cultures especially I start from Turkey in Istanbul I learned the pastries of like a, a bit of like a European and then Middle Eastern mixture and after that I end up in Europe and uh, it was uh, quite a uh, nice to know all those uh, European desserts like uh, Swiss and uh, especially Viennese in Austrian and uh, Germany after that the wind blow me like a like a leaf uh, to Asian countries, like I end up in Malaysia and uh, uh, Singapore and it's about more than six years I've been there and it was very really really eye-opening place and also uh, of course end up in Australia that is a really wonderful place that I'm very very happy here. So um, when I was in Kuala Lumpur uh, I see uh, somebody was doing a cake which is something so interesting and unusual they bake the cake and make the cake after baking upside down. So even that, you never say that I know everything. So even that after so many years and I end up that uh, learning this, I didn't, I didn't know before. So I, I haven't never heard about like a chiffon cake and angel cake, etc. So it was a kind of really learning uh, experience. So this is the recipe that I'd like to share with you today. That is so simple uh, and also very, very interesting because uh, any sponge we use, we cannot use too much uh, oil, too much butter because it will actually uh, kill the, the strength of the egg and it will just sort of like uh, lose the air. So, uh, but this recipe has a lot of oil inside and uh, something like a souffle. And when you make a souffle, automatically, naturally, souffle will fall if you not serve it in the right time. So. But if you make a souffle in a space shuttle, there is no gravity, the souffle will raise and then raise after that, it stays as high as, as it is, you know, because there's no gravity to pull this weight down and collapse the souffle down. So uh, Asian people that whoever invent this angel cake or uh, chiffon cake, so-called, uh, probably maybe many, many years ago, uh, they know how to handle the, uh, handle the gravity if you want to make it something very light. So they have a special mold, aluminum mold, a round, like circle. There's a, uh, in the center is a hollow that can bake uh, evenly at the same time. And uh, after that, the whole mold is, uh, is like, like straight uh, level at the bottom, round, but straight bottom. And uh, there is some three legs on top, like uh, sticking out. And uh, it's all aluminum. So aluminum, that means that the, 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 the sponge can stick on it because they don't use any oil or spray or any kind of uh, or butter and sugar and butter and flour, something like this, never use it. Just, just it, as it is, clean, clean mold, fill up the uh, mixture inside, and after baking, immediately they're turned upside down. So the cake is grow like a souffle, as soon as it comes out from the oven, upside down, and then gravity pulls the cake actually uh, down, but in a way that upwards and keep it in the high position, and after that, when the when the cake completely cool down and you can turn over, it's not collapsing anymore. So I'm gonna take this recipe as an inspiration. And then I did a little bit changes because I'm gonna use it as a sponge, but I'm gonna use the same kind of method. So this time, because I'm not gonna use it like a round cake, I'm gonna use a square cake, I'm going to use a cake box. So I'm gonna fold this one and uh, I'm gonna put my sponge inside without any oil, without any paper, nothing at all. As soon as baked, I put upside down and cool it down and show you what's the result, all right? So, 
all the recipes are groups. So one group we mix with another one, it becomes another group, and that group will mix with another group, it becomes another group. So just like a tree branches, all those branches comes to the end, end of it in the one big trunk, so that is the final result. So over here we have two groups. One group here, and the egg will be separated into, uh, into the yolk here, and into egg yolk, and egg white here. I have already put sugar and cream tartar over here, cream of tartar over here. I have also sugar here, all the powders I put together. I'm not mentioning about the, the recipe because you will have it anyway. So you can just, you can just look at the, the provided recipe underneath the video. So uh, then I will whip it, all right? Then you will see the result later on. So let me just separate this egg, six egg, to egg white and egg yolk and get back to you. So group one is the egg yolk and sugar already here, and then a bit of salt in here, oil is here, flour is here, vanilla also here because all the powders together, and of course uh, there's some also water. So the water actually is the, uh, the gateway to another recipe. So this recipe is converted from a mocha coffee uh, chiffon cake because there's a concentrated coffee is involved in that recipe. So I, ext I take the coffee out and replace with water. And then because the, the coffee has a good role in the recipe because it's the moisture, because the water is in there. And then of course the water will do the similar effect. So I'm not gonna change the recipe in that sense. But this water you can exchange, you can change with the, whatever you want. You can make a orange juice with orange zest or a lemon juice. If it's maybe lemon juice too much for that amount, you can mix the lemon juice with water and lemon zest and then you can, you can maybe some sort of like a, a infusion of uh, some uh, herbs and whatever you like to do, as long as that this amount is not changed. Always the same amount, 130 gram liquid goes into that first part, first group. Second group is the egg white, sugar and cream of tartar. So cream of tartar is the uh, stabilizer for the egg, egg white. It doesn't really get watery, doesn't, doesn't break up very easily and also it keep the, the air is quite longer inside when you're mixing, all right? So uh, that is the acid as a cream of tartar. You can also use uh, white vinegar for that. So I also use sometimes white vinegar if I don't have the cream of tartar. Also, like in Australia, we do like pavlova. We use the uh, white vinegar inside. It always works very nice. So anything you do with the egg white, especially for baking, uh, using a bit of uh, white vinegar, it helps a lot. All right. So let's mix the first one first. All right. So um, what's happening here? When you see that flour, as you see, it is sort of like quite lumpy. All right. So uh, most of the recipe says you have to sieve it first, but you can also if you if you show that there's no sort of foreign strange in it, things inside, like because you take it out from the packaging, all right. So you just use the whisk, and then whisk it like this, aerate the flour, and it becomes like a sifted, all right. So that is okay. Now first thing to do, if I add this flour inside here, even that I said simple mixture, but you still have to follow some kind of cue. If I add the flour over here, it will be lumpy. So mix the egg yolk with the sugar first. All right, add the oil, it becomes like a mayonnaise, not really the mayonnaise, but it becomes like that, similar thing, okay, so you see that oil is like, because of the lecithin in the egg yolk, it uh, mixed itself very nicely. Okay, and then the flour goes in, maybe half, okay. Because of the oil, the flour doesn't get lumpy. It's time to put a little bit of water, half. All right. And the rest of the flour. Do not give a pause because otherwise it will be lumpy. All right, just you have to mix it right away. And rest of the flour, uh, sorry, rest of the water goes in there. And our first base mixture is ready. It will be a vanilla sponge, so 
that's why I have vanilla inside the powder items. That's it, my first mixture is ready. Uh, if you give a little bit more extra moments to that, what you do, you develop to, uh, the gluten from the flour uh, and it will, uh, it will hold the air when we, when we load the air inside the egg white and mix it together with that, the gluten will cre create the better walls about the bubbles. So that like a, actually when you, when you everything something, it's a lot of like, a, like a soap foam. And there's, a, there's a bubbles, air pockets with the walls. So the walls has to be strong enough to hold the air. The gluten does that, all right? Okay. That is beautiful. Ready? Now, as I have certain little things that I follow up when I'm mixing this one together, like putting the oil after the egg and everything, over here also there's a kind of small little things that you can do better than anything else. You have almost one amount egg white to one amount of sugar. So what is around here? 160 gram sugar and 218 gram egg white because six egg yolk, six egg yolk, six egg white, and then this is actually uh, extra large eggs, 65 gram each, and these end up 218 gram, this one end up 103 gram egg yolk. So, um, if I can mix this right away, I will have a bit of hard time because the sugar is not melted. So, you can actually take a double boiler, so that I can put a little bowl underneath, put on the stove, and then simmer the water, place it on top and mixing, mixing, mixing that till you feel that is no more crunchy sort of bits in it. Or you can just take with a spoon in your mouth, like you can feel the sugar is still not melting. In between your teeth, it will be like crunchy. So we have to warm up this to melt the sugar. So how I do that? Very easy. Just chuck it in the microwave for just a 20 seconds at a time and you get it done. First mix it. Before you do that, you have to mix it because uh, otherwise you can get omelette very easily. Okay, now, if I touch here, I can feel the sugar. All right, so I'm just gonna put very shortly in the microwave. Always a little bit. I mean, it is easier than just to go to the kitchen and then boil the water, etc. you know. Mixing. Always about 20 seconds, take it out, mix it a little bit and put it back. Probably three times, you've done already. Okay. Already warm. Even the two times 20 seconds, it's already good enough. All right, so this one goes inside here. So I'm going to start whipping. You may say, where's your mixer? So my mixer is broken. I used that uh, balloon whisk and attached to, attached to a handle. So I can actually do it right away like this because uh, sometimes that, uh, uh, what do you call like, this handle, long handle, it, it gives you extra strength here that you can whip it, all right? But if you want to use a first mixer, you can do it. So I'm going to achieve that what I'm looking for in about the next 10 minutes. So of course you're not going to watch me doing this in 10 minutes. Once I get the egg white right, I'll get back to you. Little over 5 minutes, it's already passed. I'm almost there, maybe another 30 seconds. It's a good exercise. It's actually better control because you feel it. You know, if in the machine you don't you don't feel it. This is it is you are under control, you know. If it's just a few eggs, I recommend you to do this. So there's no point to whip the egg white uh, very very stiff because this at the moment is like beautifully uh, smooth and then that will hold the air much better than uh, a little bit more. You try to make a bit more volume, a bit more uh, lifting up, but you're losing the the structure, all right? That's it. I'm very happy with this one. What you do is you take, so there's a two group here. 
you take maybe just a quarter of it, put it over here, and don't worry about that. Uh, to keep it like a uh, airy, just mix it. All what we're doing now, we're making this mixture a bit more liquid, a bit more softer, to can uh, able to mix just very carefully with the other side. So this is now much more lighter. All right, put this one back again, and then put this everything in. Okay, keep it here. Look at that. Also, as long as, as soon as you reach the even, even color, that means you're done. You don't have to mix more further down, okay? That's it. All right, this is what we do. Scrape this one in here, like this. See, there's extra color here, white. You have to mix it a little bit more. All right, now, I have two boxes. This is, uh, when you have in the cake boxes, uh, they are designed to put cakes inside. That's why it should be, uh, shouldn't be any problem with the, with the um, uh, food safe and everything. But when you're using cake boxes, you better check from your supplier if it's a food grade or not. So, um, also, also when you bake something in the cardboard, you make sure there's not in the waxy side. This is a waxy shiny side, this is a matte side. This one probably will not gonna be good for baking, but this is okay, this side, okay? So I'm going to pour this in without putting any oil, any flour, any sugar, whatever it is inside, okay? Yeah? Just pour it in. That is two times uh, nine inch. So. I'm going to put this now in the oven, about 180 degrees for half an hour. But having said that, if there is any changes, I'll let you know, all right? You will see me next when the, the sponge is baked, I'll show you how to remove from the boxes. So I baked this sponge in about 180 degrees for half an hour. It wasn't long enough, so I put another five minutes uh, with 190, 190 degrees. I increased another 10 degrees. But uh, having said that, if you uh, want to take exactly the measurement that I, would, I recommend you, take 185 degrees, 30 minutes will be just right about this size, as long as the sponge not higher than that. So as I said, I prefer a, I prefer a thinner sponge is about maximum about one inch thickness, and after that, I sandwich it without cutting it because this is such a delicate sponge. If you're cutting, it will be all crumb, all the sort of like it sticking to the knife. All right. So uh, as you see, I bake it uh, straight in the oven, but after that, I turn right away backwards, and I left the sponge about an hour in the fridge to cool down, so we can take this one out now. So that is the sponge look like. So uh, it may have a little bit of pocket underneath, so doesn't matter. Just uh, cut on the sides here. First of all, remove that, remove the sides. Just cut the sides with the knife. Okay. Okay, just cut the, the sides. Okay, now that looks pretty. Uh, what we have to do, we have to now, because we didn't use any kind of uh, sort of like a paper or anything underneath, so we have to scrape the sponge out of the cutboard, just like this, all right? And after that, you're placing here on the board.
That's it. All right. Now, my recommendation to you, if you don't want to do it in cardboard box, you can also do it in aluminum rings. You take the aluminum, it has to be aluminum. It cannot be done anything as aluminum because the original uh, chiffon cake or angel cake uh, mold is aluminum. It works always best. So aluminum, clean, no fat, no oil, nothing at all. Also aluminum ring, also no fat, no oil at all. So you put it over here, all right? Because the sponge is like a, a not so liquid, not so runny, you can just put fill directly inside, not more than about uh, two centimeter or two and a half centimeter. All right, after that, you bake it. As soon as you bake it, put another tray on top of it, doesn't matter what tray is this, and then turn it right away after baking and let it be there like this, hanging down for an hour in the fridge. And after that, what you do, you just turn around again. After that, like I did, use the knife, remove the ring. After that, use another long knife, remove the sponge, you have a beautifully Bake nice and soft sponge, all right? Japanese people love this kind of sponge. I used to do a kind of wedding cake with this sponge for a, a Japanese company, abundance of it. So every week for a couple of, uh, let's say 10, 20 of them. So because they've been sort of like serving for a small group of people, always come from with the group in, from Japan in Australia. So uh, that was the one time that we used to do that a lot of them. So uh, now we're going to continue doing a cake with these sponges. That will be also just like what I did for the Japanese people. And uh, what is happening now, we're going to use a fresh cream inside. It, let's say cream shanty, which is not really important. What is it? Just the uh, icing sugar or normal sugar with, uh, with the whipped cream. And after that, we're, going to, we don't, we're not going to use any gelatin or something, but we're going to mix a little bit of mock cream inside just to make it a bit more firmer. All right. And after that, uh, we're going to use uh, fresh fruit and compote fruit inside. And once you have the sandwich, it's about this size. After that, I'm going to show you how to also decorate in a very, very simple and sort of very practical way uh, using only mock cream to make it really nice and sort of like a uh, classically decorated with a kind of uh, pressure piping. With a, definitely, you will like this texture. So how are we going to decorate this cake? The way how I say, you will see that next, but I have to get some preparations done. I like to chop my fruits. I don't want to waste your time to see me chopping fruits. And also I whip my cream and then we will do that next finishing off together. To finish the cake, furthermore, we need all those things what you see on the table. Let me go through very quickly. So I have my mixed fruit already marinated. So I chopped the most possible fruits like a banana. Uh, I take fresh strawberries. I take a canned peaches, which is very nice. Also canned pear because the or a fresh pear will be too hard to, to have that uh, matching to this texture. At the same time, I just squeeze half a lemon and then just to put two spoon of uh, uh, sugar on top. Uh, that, that sugar and lemon is like develop the flavors of the fruit much more uh, better than the, just the fresh fruit itself. But the problem is more you leave this one on the table, the fruits will be released the juice and it goes underneath. So when I'm putting inside the cake, I will just leave the juice behind. So I have my uh, sponges ready. Sponge has a kind of a skin as every other sponge, the same thing. I just make a little bit of like a scratching over here, make sure that the, the uh, cream is uh, penetrate to the actual skin inside here. That will be much more easy to do, all right? Okay, just like this, all right? And then uh, what I have here, these are, these are the fruits that to decorate. I have fresh strawberries, kiwi, banana, uh, and then blueberry as a black, darker tone. And then, as I said, pear and then peach. Uh, this is from Ken, just a compote fruit. All right. So um, as you uh, realize that I have kiwi here with decoration, but not kiwi here because kiwi, uh, pineapple and uh, melon has got sort of like enzymes that doesn't go with the cream. It becomes so bitter. All right. So that's why I'm not leaving it leave the kiwi only on the top decoration but not inside the cake and i have a syrup here you can use the lemon syrup just a lemon syrup uh, but i have here honey and uh, rum syrup this is what i prefer for this particular cake so let's get prepared our cream as i mentioned before i have already whipped my fresh cream which is about uh, just normal fresh cream and then as you see the color is a bit yellowish and I have also whipping cream over here which is you can also call mock cream all right so if I have another bowl here and then take some fresh cream here 
let's say for this cake, about this much, right? And I put also a little bit of milk cream inside, just maybe one third, all right? So what does it do? The sweetness of this milk cream, the whipping cream, it will also sweeten up the fresh cream. It becomes a kind of creme chanty. Also what will happen, the stability of the milk cream will also stabilize the fresh cream. So it's not gonna be too soft, all right? So just mix it together like that. That's it. If you don't want to use any mock cream inside here, you can also use just the icing sugar, all right? And also additional, just a little bit of gelatin, all right? Maybe just a five gram for a kilo, all right? That's it. That's ready. I will do other cakes with that later on. All right, first thing to do, we're going to use some of this syrup, moisturizing the sponge. You have to be careful at the lower part, this lower sponge, not too much. I don't want to come the juice out to the board. So that's enough. Now we can add our cream. I'll keep some for the top. I use plenty fruits because these fruits will sort of like construct a kind of height with the cream. That's it, should be enough. Then we put more fresh cream on top. Yum. Okay, that was just nice. I'm sure you know about this shortcake. Shortcake is like a, uh, just like this, two sponge or maybe more than two sponge. In between, plenty of fresh cream and then plenty of fruits. The fruit is constructed actually height between the two sponge, so the uh, the cream doesn't collapse so easily. All right. So um, that's pretty similar. So this is a kind of mixed fruit shortcake, let's say. Put this here. All right. More syrup. We can be a little bit more generous on the top. Okay. That's ready. Now I'm gonna give a crumb coat, but before than that, I like to wash my hands. So I mixed a little bit more cream, wasn't enough to, for the, the crumb coat. So we're gonna do this one now. And also like clean the sides a little bit, all right? So if there's a kind of sponge crumbs around. All right, now, just gonna go on the side, put some cream, but very little bit. And I'm not really aiming a proper masking. I'm just sort of like a, pushing all the crumbs around the cake because we're gonna coat the whole cake with whipping cream, not the fresh cream. Okay, then take the rest, put on top. I'll let you know later on how much cream I used. 
at the moment and I'm just mixing according to my feelings so it's not possible to measure but uh, I will let you know because I'm going to put the whole cake on the scale and find out how much I used. Considering of course there is some fruits inside. Okay, just a bit of tidying up. So, our naked cake is now ready. It's gonna go in the fridge for a while. Then I'm gonna clean up again on the table. And now we're gonna start properly masking one more time with whipping cream and decorating. Let's do our masking now. Very basic rules of masking. The body of the cake should be harder than the cream what we apply on it. So in this case, it's different. I have here firmer whipping cream and softer fresh cream in the cake around the cake. So to do that properly, I use a trick. I take a 50 millimeter uh, nozzle, round nozzle, and flatten that, which is just a, a ply or something. Um, and after that, I'm gonna use that one for masking purpose. Instead of using a, a pallet knife, spatula, I'm gonna use the, the nozzle. All right, so put this in. And then I just go like this. I have a very nice coating here, yet to be flattened again with a pallet knife. Exactly the same thing I do also on the side. So one, two, and three. That's enough. Now, what we're going to do, I'm gonna take a, a scraper like this. Make sure the corner is 90 degrees, it's not the round one. I'm just gonna go very simply, just go from left, right, clean up, and right, left, very gently, okay? This is not the final, final finishing. We're gonna do also further other things on it. See, as you realize that, I'm not gonna sort of like starting from one corner, go around the cake. I just handle the each side individually, starting from left, cor left, left corner to the right direction, and then also start from the right to the left direction. Okay, we're done now. So after that, I may continue to using this one, but I can also use the uh, palette knife. So as you see that over here, this is also possible. Here's the sponge appeared. I just put a little bit more cream here. Okay, maybe I continue with the palette knife so I can show you how it is. That's it. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to continue do some piping on it. So in order to do that, uh, I can just estimate the, the shape of what I'm going to pipe, but I like to use a round ring to make it absolutely sure that what I'm doing correct. Okay, now I just take this 15 centimeter round ring, touch it over here. I have my guidance here. After that, I'm going to just go around and touch on the side, but not going all the way down, just in the middle 
this much. One, two, and three, and four. So I will have another small corners here, but I'm not going to worry about this. I can just do it by estimation. That one. All right. So a little piping cone. Put some cream inside. One will not be enough, so I just prepare right away two or three of them. Let's start with two and see what happens. If we need, we can wait do more. I'm going to cut very small here. Just a very small. And then I'm going to start my pressure piping. Very easy to do. Just give a distance and then give plenty pressure and then make, do some movement. So as you see over here, it's just the cream is frilling around that. Cream is like frilling in the air before touchdown. Okay? Because such a irregular shapes coming out, you can go over and over and you don't see the, any kind of joining. And the good thing about this also, you can continue this one on the side. Because the pressure cream is also travel sideways, so it will stick on the side of the cake very easily. So it gives a wonderful texture. It's actually a very, very old method. But sometimes old methods are forgotten with the modern ones. Actually, we forgot about how nice was that also. So it should be like, can be used anytime. I'm a bit of old school though, so I like those kind of things. So that was a bit of sponge visible here. I just coated up with the tan, no problem. So as I mentioned, it's not, it was not enough. One, so I'm just going to get the second one. So this time, take the cake in the hand. That's thin enough. Watch this. And then also do a small little round part over here on the side. That's it. Now we have to do some more piping with a little star nozzle. Okay, fill up this, uh, no, uh, this bag with the nozzle. It's about six millimeter. So the flat one was 15 millimeter. This is six millimeter star nozzle. These whipping creams, you can actually add liquid inside. So as I did just a few minutes ago, I put a little bit more milk inside to make it a little bit softer, to make it everything possible to do it properly. All right, you can use some liquid inside, even water. So, so uh, I'm going to now uh, do some circle piping. If I start from one corner, go around, I may just make a mistake because it's too much distance. So I'm gonna target myself from this corner to this corner, from this corner to this corner, all right? And then continue over here. So uh, one, this is what I do always, you know, one big, one big turn, one small turn, and after that, do this. That small, big, small, and do that. Small, big, small. Do that again. So traveling this only quarter amount, it will be quite comfortable to do it, okay? So same thing over here. We're gonna do now, always clean the, the end bit. Watch this. One, two, three. One, two, and three. So that when the cake touching to the board, it's a little bit uh, not so clean. I'm just going to do the same thing over here. 
one big, one small, treble, one big, one small, one big, again, small. So, small, big, small, halfway through, small, big, small, halfway through, small, big, small, halfway through, again, same thing, complete the line, small, big, small, and finish with a small. So the cake is already nicely piped. I will have now, clean up a little bit, and after that, put this cake in the fridge for a while, maybe just about 15 minutes. I clean up and I show you how to use fresh foods by glazing with the jelly. At this stage, we can just take uh, fresh foods, slice them nicely, and decorate the cake however you want. But the problem is it will, no time, will lose the, the moisture on the surface. It will look uh, quite ugly. So that's why it's a good idea to glaze the fruits before we placing on the cake. At the same time, uh, we can also take the fruits and uh, without glazing, decorate the cake. And after that, we just use the little brush and put the glaze on the fruits, uh, wherever the fruits available. But at the same time, the freshly coating with the jelly, the jelly will run around and it will create sort of ugly uh, drops that if, especially even if there is a little bit of color inside the jelly. So, um, for the glazing the fruit, we may think about two different types. One is the gelatin based glaze, another one is the aga aga based glaze. So which is the Asian people use, like a Japanese uh, uh, glaze, uh, Japanese jelly, it's called uh, sometimes ice jelly. And when I was in Germany, there was another product called uh, instant clear gel, just need about 25 gram for one kilo uh, of water or, or syrup. So it will create a sort of very instantly setting jelly. So if you use agar agar based jelly, it sets very quickly, which is the proper thing to do. If you use the gelatin based uh, glaze, it will be quite difficult because the gelatin doesn't set right away. Okay, so that's why uh, today I use uh, this kind of jelly. Uh, we need only about 25 gram for a liter. So what I take, I just take about 12 and a half gram and half a liter water, but I take only half amount of water. So that means I take the jelly enough for half a liter water, but I only take 250 gram water, mix it together, put it in the microwave about one and a half, two minutes, bring to the boil, and after that take it out and I put more uh, completing water, which is completing to the half a liter, uh, and then the whole thing is cooled down right away, which is just nice now, it's about lukewarm. So there's always foam on it. I'm just gonna take it off like that and whatever remaining here, nice and clear here, and then the condition is very well. So uh, I'm gonna go a little bit more further with the detail. I like to glaze my fruits individually and then placing on a platform and then before I put on the cake. So what I do, I just grab it with a, a fork, dipping nicely, just wait for a couple of seconds, all right? After that, placing here. Look at that, okay? Have to be a bit more quicker. See all those drippings around. I don't want to have it on the cake, so that's why I do it over here. All right, that's ready. So we don't need this anymore. Turn around and. Uh, uh, blueberries we don't need to glaze and the uh, strawberry I will dip it and place it right away on the cake and be careful with that and also what I like to do now I like to take a bananas and then caramelize them I probably need about two slices for each corner so I'm gonna cor I'm gonna make corner decoration for four corners right so just Cut like this. Is it enough? Yeah. Don't want to make it too too much. Right. This one there. So a bit of icing sugar. All right. Then you use the creme brulee torch.
give it sort of one spot here nice and brownish. That's it. Now I go and get the cake. This jelly, uh, sometimes if you take too much time, it will start getting hardened, so it makes it not possible to dip anything inside. So just put back in the microwave for just a minute or something, or maybe just 30 seconds, all right, to make it liquid. But do not heat up too much, all right, uh, because um, it, if it's too hot, it will melt the cream on the cake. It's already good. All right, I like to start with the strawberries. If you have strawberries with a nice green, just leave it there. Don't have to take it out because green is add another color to the cake. Just dip it nicely and take it out only once. Make sure that it's not really too much dripping. And I will put this one right on the corner here. All right. If you wait just uh, three, four seconds, Dripping will stop and everything will be already set, no problem at all, all right? So, on the other hand, so what I like to do, I'm going to put other fruits. Uh, I have sort of like pre decided to put two peaches on each side. This is one. And this is two. Carry on. Just repeat each type of fruit at a time. So the fruits are nice and shiny and it will stay like that. Now next thing I like to do is the uh, uh, probably kiwi. Just put a little bit of uh, lifting like this on here. With this kind of system dipping fruits into jelly uh, you can really create wonderful things. All right. So um, I think the pear goes to this side. No, pear goes to this side, and this one goes to this side. So let's put it. Let's put it. Or why don't we do it like this inside here? That looks nice. And obviously goes to pair on the other side. Like that. That's it. So what's missing here? One more color, which is a dark color, blueberries. So I'm just going to scatter around maybe one or two here. Maybe one here, so I don't have to be too symmetrical with that. Here, one here, and that's it. You have to know when to stop. So now this cake is finished. Let's call this cake a mixed fruit shortcake with the chiffon sponge. I think it's a perfect match with the chiffon sponge. It's nice and soft. Inside is a fresh fruit and fresh cream. It will be, I think, very, very delicious. So uh, actually, I'm going to eat this cake because this is for my, for my friend's birthday cake. Uh, and I'm sorry that you cannot have a taste of it. But I'm sure you can guess the, the textures. That will be really fantastic. Uh, I don't do actually this kind of tutorials often, but if you like what you have seen today, let me know. I can just plan a couple of more other uh, cakes like this, like complete cakes also inside, outside or together uh, as a tutorial. So uh, thank you so much for having me today again and choosing Yenis Cake Tips as your internet reference for learning. Uh, God bless you all. Until to my next tutorial. Bye for now.